Hey, what's going on everybody? Cotton here, and I'm back at it again with another map guide here. This time we're going to go over the customs map. This one has probably been my most requested map, as it kind of is, it's not necessarily the biggest map, but it's definitely one of the most dynamic, and one that has probably the most loot locations. So let's go ahead and get into this here. Now as you can see, I am on the far west side of the map. That's basically how this is. You spawn on the far left side over here, and you just want to head to the east. You want to head that way. Both the roads leading out of this spot, they're going to just point you directly east. So looking at this map we have right here, these were actually provided to me by one of my Twitch subs, Kitty on a Leash. So mad shoutouts over there. I'm also going to put some links in the description to these maps. Uh, we have some for all the maps here drafted up. Uh, even the newest shoreline map, uh, there's like a hand-drawn map, it's very well done. But right now, let's look at the customs. Now, like I said, we spawned on this street way over here on the left side. And basically, you just want to head east. Your, all your extractions are going to be back over here. So now, we're going to start out in Area 1. What I call Area 1 is basically this starting spawn area before you cross the river. And now people can spawn all kinds of locations around here, marked by these little yellow boxes. There's just random spawns all throughout this little area here. So you have to kind of be careful based on where you're at, where you spawn at. Alright, so what do you say we get a better view here of that uh, western road so I can show you some stuff? Never underestimate your ability to jump on things in this game. It can really take you places, you know? Okay, so we were just down there in the street, but now we're on the roof, just so we can see a little bit better. Now, as you can see, the big orange warehouse is probably going to be the biggest point of interest here in Area 1. Uh, you're going to notice a lot of fights in there, because upstairs there is a locked office that you need the customs key to get into, which has a safe and some computers you can loot, things like that. But also, all of these storage containers here, uh, all the ones that are actually open, they all have loot in them. You can grab up. Some of the cars have loot. Uh, especially right here. This is actually one of your first points of interest. It's called loot van because in the back of the van There's a crate and there's one over in the road right there that you can get But like I said, this is the far left side of the map or the west side And you just want to head to the east side to get out of here both of the side roads here Whether you're on you know this uh, north side or the south side, they're gonna point you east So when we come over here we can just see the road that leads to the train tracks. Now, the train tracks basically leads to all the different types of river crossings that we're going to come up to later. So, yeah, whether you go this way... Or if you come up over this way, you're going to head to the east. It's not really going to matter. You can't really go the wrong direction. You kind of just follow the flow of the roads and the river and everything. So again, there's the loot van over here. We're just coming over to this side to take a look. This is another part of the spawn area. Not much loot over here on the right side. There might be a little bit in, uh, I believe there's something in that container right there, a little loot crate or something. But really, it's, it's all these random open doors in here, all these car trunks, you know, random stuff you can loot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the big orange warehouse over here. Now, there's many different ways into this main yard right here. You can jump the dumpster. There's holes in the wall all that direction. There's holes in the wall over here. We're just going to jump the wall right now. So as you come in here, you're going to notice, yeah, there's just a bunch of crap everywhere. It's like a little construction yard. These guard shacks right here, there's a blue one right over here and another one to the left on the other side. They're going to have filing cabinets in them that you can loot up for some gear. But most importantly here is the big warehouse in the starting zone. A lot of fights are going to happen here. Now there's two ways in, the front door here or the side door. And once you're inside, you have a couple points to look at now. You can go upstairs here. This door requires the customs key door to loot. Now this shelf over here is a good point of interest for me as well when I come in here. You can jump up on this, follow the railing up, and then you're able to actually look out these windows toward the west side of the map. You can see all inside the trench right here. You can somewhat see in the storage container area and a little bit of each road to see if anybody's coming at you. But keep in mind, you're also pretty visible in this window. And then now towards the back of the warehouse over here, there's going to be a green crate in this little lit area right here. There you go. And there's also a duffel bag against the wall over there. And that's about it for in here. All right, so now we're out in front of the warehouse here. And again, that's the north road. That's the south road. You know, it still pushes you this way. And let's also keep in mind, like I said, don't be surprised at what you can climb on in this game. 
you can really get a bird's eye view sometimes of some things you need. And as you can see, there's another way into the yard right there, another little crook in the wall. There's also a crook in the wall right here around that little corner where you can just kind of whoop, go on in. There's also areas of the train here where you can properly prone under it. But again, once you get to the train, that's basically it for the, you know, the spawning area. Because people can spawn anywhere throughout this area. And now, you have a couple choices to make now. You have at least three land bridges you can take. One of which is going to be on the right over here. There we go. I just ran down the train a bit to show you. Your first option to cross is going to be on the south side over here. This is what... A lot of people like to use this because you have somewhat cover with the rock and the container and the piping. A lot of people consider this like the easiest way to cross the river, but really it's up to you. And now as we head up the train a little bit here, again, there's the crossing behind us we just looked at. We have another land crossing right over here on our right. This one I consider somewhat risky just because... You have the bridge to your left, which is your first area where you're going to engage some scavs. And also, players can... I don't know. Players on the right, players on the left. Who knows? But, again, this is another way to get across uh, if you really want to run it. Alright, so here we are. We just came back down the shoreline just a little bit here. And we're at the actual bridge. And again, this is another one of those, you know, personal preference things. If you're feeling ballsy, take the bridge, you know? There's actually a couple car trunks you can loot on the way. I'm not really sure what exactly you find right now. I think it's just random food items. Yeah, there's some hot rods, some green tea. But keep in mind, when you're on the bridge, there will be scavs at the convenience store right up at the edge of the bridge here. And there's a possibility of the roof scav who's able to see you from this roof over here. So he might start popping shots at you. But when we look to our left over here, this is actually our last point of crossing. Which a lot of people somewhat like. Um, you're not as exposed. You can come down the far north side of the map and just run the planks. But once you get up on the bank, you will be expecting scavs over here by this little convenience store. Or whatever the hell that thing is right there. Alright, so here we are on the other side of the bridge now. As you can see, there's the first crossing here, there, another one over there. Convenience store here. So you have a couple decisions to make depending on which bridge you took. If you go to the right, there's a couple of alleys that will lead you into the construction yard over here. Which is a pretty safe place to go, but watch out for this two-story area right here. Because players can climb that, that two-story building under construction and they can look down on you. So if you choose to not take the construction route, you can take the more action-packed route, which would be to the left through the woods. Now, once you go through the woods over here, you're going to hit quite a couple scavengers, or the scav faction as they call them. Okay, we're just looking down the street now. The bridge is right here behind me. So your first bout of scav ambush, if it's not right here at the bridge, it's going to be at the bus stop right here. See how we have a bus at, down at the end of the road and there's like a little car next to it? There's going to be a bus stop there. A couple of scavs waiting for you. They're pretty, pretty tough to deal with, but you're going to have to fight them either way you go. Well, not necessarily, I guess. You're going to have to fight them if you go through construction. If you go through the woods through dorms, you're going to have to fight separate scavs. And you can kind of get around those scavs. Alright, so first, why don't we go take a look at construction over here. Let's just say that we took the very south river the easy way. Okay, so now here we are. Let's just say that we took the safest route and we crossed the river on the south side. So once you cross the river, you're going to come up to the road over here by the Tarkov truck. And that's about where I am right now. Again, it's going to take you through the construction zone, which are all these little back alleys here. And then they're going to lead you to the overpass. And here's the bus stop right here. So you got to be aware of the scavs again. So here we are. There's the train. Here's the other side of the first bridge crossing. And it brings us over here. Now behind the Welcome to Tarkov truck, we call it that because it says Welcome to Tarkov, uh -huh, is a green crate for you to loot. And then you have a couple choices now. There's a couple different ways to get into the construction yard. Your first one being, of course, the back alley right here. Which I sometimes do not recommend just because it's easy for players, especially squads, to kind of camp out in here. This is kind of like a natural choke point. Um, usually it'll be when you turn the corner. If the sniper scab on the roof doesn't get you, there could possibly be some players up in here. So... Just watch again that uh, two-story that's under construction. 
So let's go ahead and venture on in through here. And I'll show you there's a couple other ways to get into the construction yard. You don't have to use this alleyway. As you can see, we have multiple holes in the fence. There's one there at that bush, one there, and there's also one over here against the wall. And then to go out any of these holes is just going to spit you back on the main street over here where you can see the river and the bridge and everything. So again, we're not too lost, you know, nothing scary yet. So now let me go ahead and climb this uh, two-story that I keep warning you guys about here and we'll get a better look around. You just come around the side over here, there's some stairs, and you just head on up. Alright, so as you can see, this spot is a pretty good little sniper perch for anybody who rushes the area. Mainly for the bridge over here. You pretty much got the bridge crossing covered. But okay, so of course we got the elbow we just came through to our left. There's the easy crossing, here's the other crossings. So if you chose to go the other way... You're going to have to run through the woods over here, which is going to take you to the dormitory. Now, the dormitory actually has a lot going on there. There's, a, like, I'd say about 90% of the keys you find in the game right now, they go to the dormitory. All the ones that are numbered and the marked key, the guard desk key, they all go to the dormitories. So let's go ahead and head on over there. But before we do a quick uh, tidbit right here since we're next to the uh, sniper two-story. If you find something called the machinery key, it opens the door to this truck. Not really sure what's supposed to be in there yet. Haven't found much, but uh, yeah, just in case you find an orange machinery key. Let's go ahead and take the uh, cheeky way out of the construction yard if you need. You can jump up on this little ramp over here, get up on the rubble, jump the fence. Ah, and we're in. Don't worry about them legs. So again, there's the bridge behind us. Here's the bus stop I told you to be careful about. Usually, there's scavs either camping near the bus or they're across the street behind that pipe over there, just chilling out. But let's go ahead and head back now and let's, let's approach the woods as if we came up from the, uh, the bank over here. Oh, by the way, while I'm here, I guess I should mention if you come in here, there is a cash register that you can loot for some money. You don't want to find much in here, but, you know, it's a single cash register. Go for it. All right, so we're back at the bridge over here. Again, this is uh, assuming now that we're taking the north side of the map, and we either use the bridge or we use the uh, land crossing next to the bridge, or some people call it garbage crossing, too, or planks, wood planks. I'm not really sure what to call it yet. So, yeah, you're going to come up the uh, little bank line here, and, you, again, you're going to want to look out for scavs. There's a chance one of them could be lurking around, dunking on you. The safest way usually is to come all the way over here on the farthest north side that you can. And there's a bit of a concrete wall over here and also, you know, you can just use the actual ridge line for cover. If you need to, there's a truck you can duck behind and some concrete barricades. But yeah, you come up over here, voila. No, these are not lootable. Wish they were, but they're not because there's so many of them. So again, there's construction yard, there's the road. Let's go ahead and head through the woods to the dorms. So as you're heading through the woods over here, again, you know, construction to the right, we're just heading on through. There's going to be a campsite over here on your left, which is going to have a green crate you can loot. You can see the tent through the bushes right there a little bit. And then you're going to see it. This is the very first dorm building, or three-story as we call it, because there's a secondary dorm building that's only a two-story. And again, when you are approaching this building, be careful because we have scavs here. They roam in and out of the building. They roam around the back of the building. A lot of times you'll find them right here as there's another convenience store right here that has some cash registers in there for money. But most of these doors are openable. And we're going to walk out into the front now of the parking lot. And we are at the dorms. Now, if we look this way to the road, it just kind of forks right over here. Here's the pipe I told you to worry about. The broken wall leads you out of the construction zone. And here's the bus stop from earlier. Again, this is another scav ambush spot, so, you know, look out. But back here in the dorms now, we have a lot going on. As I mentioned, like, almost every key in the game pretty much goes to these two buildings collectively. And usually the keys, how they work, is if the key will say, like, room 110... The one at the beginning of it means first floor, and then you just, like, look for 110. But here we are in the inside of the first dorm building. Now, this is big, again, because there's a lot of locked rooms in here. A lot of these rooms need keys. Almost everything in here is lootable. 
And also in this room right here, the first little room, this uh, guard post or whatever, there's a TV on a table, and right there is where you're going to find your factory key. At least that's where I found mine, just chilling out. So again, most of the keys in here are going to be pretty simple. They're going to be labeled, you know, 110, 218, 214, whatever. Uh, there's one room I want to show you. It's called the Marked Room. It's on the very third floor, and you take a left over here. And you'll see this chair with candles on it and candles in front of this door. It's some kind of weird religious cult thing that's in the game, but this is the marked room if you find the marked key. Now right next to the marked room actually is a nice little spot where you can actually get up on the second story of the dorm building here. And just kind of look, look out, look around, you know, see if anybody's creeping up on you. Check for scabs in the area. So another uh, point of interest would be right here. This white car right here. If you find the foldable car key and you pop this trunk open, there's actually a grenade crate in there, which can have anywhere from one to six grenades in it. So that's just something to keep an eye out. And then again, inside the secondary dorm building here, you're going to have a lot more keys. They're all similarly like labeled. I think that it's still 100 and 200 in here, actually, isn't it? Yeah, these are just like, uh, yeah, 107, 108, yeah. I, I don't think there should be any duplicate rooms between the two buildings. I think they stagger them. But again, when you first come in here, this is the guard desk key, if you find that. And there's an ammo, there's like a weapon crate in there. There's an ammo box on the floor, ammo box here on the table. Which, as you can see, some stuff is actually still kind of glitched. Where you can actually loot through the walls and all that. But I really don't condone, condone doing that. Because eventually it's going to be fixed and you're going to need the key anyway. So, that's the dorms. Let's go ahead and head back on over to the main center road over here so we can get our bearings back, find out where we're at. Alright, so here we are. This is what I would call, like, the, uh, the, you know, the crossroads or the bus stop, basically. But this is where everything kind of starts coming together. You can continue to go through the woods if you want, but eventually you're going to have to cross that overpass down the street. That overpass is kind of like... The choke point of the map, or like the end of area two, as I would call it. See, as you can see here, we just came from the dorms, and we came down the road, and now this is just the main road. Here's the overpass, and there's train tracks that lead up to the wall, so you're going to have to cross it eventually. So that would be pretty much the end of area two. You've got the construction yard down here, the convenience store, and the dorms. So once we cross this overpass, we're going to be in what's area three to me which is going to have the gas station coming up and then the military checkpoint, which, again, both these can be avoided, and we're going to go over that here in a second as we go to the extracts. All right, so again, we're here on the main road. Uh, these little holes in the walls are how you kind of get out of the, the uh, construction yard. There's the two-story you can climb. You just kind of cruise on through. I think that this little shed right here is the cabin key, but... You might not want to quote me on that one, but I think it is. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Oh, great. I'm going to get a thousand comments now. But uh, I think that's the cabin key, I believe. Not 100%, though. I never really bothered to go in there. Not sure what's in there. But let's go ahead and head for the overpass here. Now, this is probably the most common way a lot of players will approach the overpass, is just coming up the main road here. Can be kind of dangerous if there's people camping on it. Because you might get that sometimes. You might get some player scavs up here or even just player squads. They can sit up on here and just kind of look back. Because, again, this is kind of a choke point now. People have to cross this bridge, whether it's over here by the road or over here in the woods. As you can see, you have to cross this bridge at some point. But once we cross the bridge, it just basically leads you to either the gas station, which is right here, or what's known as the shortcut which is what the factory key opens up on this map. There's a door over here. So as we come up here, again, there's going to be scavs in this area. Usually they like to hide behind this pipe over here, behind the sandbags. Sometimes they're in the building. Uh, sometimes they wander out here into the road even or behind that rock over there. So just be on the lookout when you're on the bridge. Usually stay up on the bridge and pop shots from there. But on your right over here, you're going to see a door. Now, this door is what the factory key unlocks on this map. It's known as the shortcut door. And this will take you very quickly to the inside of, of the second construction yard over here, or the warehouse yard, or storage yard. I don't know what the hell it's called. 
So, again, this is why the factory key is pretty hot. Helps you get places. There's also some secondary rooms in here that have some loot in them. But for a lot of you who don't have the factory key but want to know how to, you know, cope without it, like, let's say you don't feel like going through the gas station and then going to checkpoint. Well, remember how I keep telling you don't underestimate how well you can jump? If you want to just run this pipe right here, jump at the last second. Ow, barbed wire hurts just a little bit. We'll be all right. You know, bandage that up. Good as new, baby. So once we jump that, and you don't even really have to jump it, honestly. You can go through the gas station if you want. But once you're over here, there's a piece of rubble right here. You can kind of... You know what I'm saying? You can kind of jump in here and cheat the shortcut. Haha. -ha. And then vice versa works if you're a scav in here when you spawn in or you're just locked in here for some reason. You want to get out real quick, but you don't want to have to go all the way around the wall. Because the next way in is way down there at a hole in the wall. So you either have to run all the way around to get back to the gas station or good old forklift here. Oh, he's such he's such a good friend. Hang on, let me up. There we go. And then you hit. Aha! See that parkour? Amazing. Get wrecked, factory key. Let's go ahead and jump inside the gas station for a second here and just check this out. As you can see, there's a bevy of cars here. There's also a green crate, I think, behind the. Up oh, there you go. There's a crate right there behind the sandbags. All these cars have trunks you can pop. The ambulances may have meds in them. There's another uh, van right there that has a chance to have meds. Yeah, right there, white med van. Inside the gas station, there's actually quite a few rooms in here. Uh, mainly, if you come behind the first counter, there's three different cash registers you can loot for money. And there could be food on the counter here sometimes. And then you may, you got the bulk of the gas station loot, which I believe is in here. Uh, there's a couple rooms in here, you know, a couple offices to loot. This third door on the right, there's a safe in there, but you need a key to get in there. And I actually... I do not remember what key it is. God, this is like the worst guide ever. I know, 10 out of 10, right? I don't remember what the hell it's called. Yeah, I'll have to come back to you on that one. And then we're just going to go take a look at the front of the gas station again because there's two ways to go around. You can either just walk around the side of the gas station, which sometimes is a better idea, or you can just go through the gas station, which will spit you out of the back door right over here somewhere. Yep, right here. And then as you come out, again, here's that spot I showed you where you can kind of jump the wall if you need. Because if you don't want to jump the wall over there, you have to travel this pipe to the end of the wall to get through to one of the extractions. The problem is, is way down here at the end of the road, this is what we call the military checkpoint. And there's probably five or six scavs there just waiting to bust on you, including two sniper scavs. So we'll shoot down there in a minute. But before we leave the gas station... Green crate right there. Yep. And right here is where the map really starts to throttle in a little bit. Is because, really, there's nowhere to really go. Everything's walled off there, so it forces you to go to the checkpoint or to the extracts over here. So as you creep up to the military checkpoint, you're going to have this shed up here on your left. It's uh, up against the wall. There should be an ammo crate in there and possibly something else to loot. Let's go ahead and cruise on over here. And as you can tell, I'm in offline mode. There's no scabs here right now. Otherwise, this tour would not be possible. But yeah, here we go, boys. We are at the military checkpoint. Now, when you come over here, again, there's going to be about a million scabs. There's a green crate here. And if you find the military checkpoint key, which is a big one, inside here, there is a crate. Right here, there's a grenade crate. And there's an ammo crate. There's another ammo crate in the back of the room, and if you look just right there, you can see it in the bottom right of the window. There's like a little blue uh, weapon rack there. That, that thing can spawn uh, full-size AKs and AK-74Us, I believe. So yeah, that, that key is a pretty valuable one if you can make it in here. Lots of loot in there. Lots of loot. Alright, so now let's just uh, go over the three extractions since we're already over here. We're all the way down now at the east, uh, at the far east end of the map. And this would probably be, like, the farthest extraction you can get to would be to come over here. But basically, they're all, like, two of them are going to look very similar. You're going to come through the, the wall. Whether you come in here or you come in down there by the shortcut that I showed you earlier. Like, there's the forklift over there we jumped. So the first one you can get to, you kind of just go in the back over here. And again, guys, explore these warehouses because there could be some good juice in there. You know what I mean? 
All these warehouses in here, most of them have doors you can get into, and they're just all kinds of, you know, boxes, tool chests, crates you can loot. But once you get all the way back here to the back at the, at the, the back train tracks, then you know that you're near something good. So in the back corner here, this is the furthest extract you can get to. Usually this is the one that's not used too much at all. But you just kind of open this door right here to this bunker, go downstairs, and you go home. There's your door. So we're going to go ahead and head up the railroad tracks now a bit. And I'm just going to show you how to come at the other extract now. And it's very simple here. Like I said, we're going to be heading back up to the supply yard where the shortcut key takes you. This is the first uh, extract. This is probably the closest extract you can get to, I'd say. All right, so again, I haven't jumped this yet here, but I just came from down there, the end of the tracks. Military checkpoint will be over there, and this is the storage yard. And you can get over that fence there if you need, just like that. But here's your other extraction point. Right over here, you just follow the fence. It's next to this big warehouse. Again, same as the other one. So where the hell are we? Well, again, military checkpoint's back there. Uh, the construction yard is right up there. And this is the shortcut area that the key brought us into. Let's go ahead and head over here for a minute. Now, this warehouse is going to have a sniper scav on it sometimes, so you got to be careful. But when we get right up on this hill, you can see there's where the shortcut door is. The one I showed you how to jump over earlier that you need the factory key for. So we're here. You could just jump out right over there, swing across the yard, and boom. But again, you might want to investigate some of these warehouses here, particularly this one. This warehouse is the only place I've ever been able to find the wallet spawn. So again, let's just say that you came through the shortcut or you jumped over the fence. You know, you're going to see this is the big warehouse that's flat in the back. And when you go into the back of it, there's a shelf at the very back near the back door. And that is the only place I've ever been able to find a wallet. And I've consecutively found them there every patch. Right over here on this shelf. Usually it's right down here somewhere, and I don't see one right now. We're not that lucky. Other stuff over here, condensed milk. Oh, that's a pretty good grab. You know, two of them's a PSO scope, and they sell for decent. WD-40 sells for a lot, too. There's a lot of weird stuff you can grab. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, so if you want, there's a back door on this warehouse. That's fine. You know, just creep on out the back. And again, just for location, there's the shortcut that the factory key was for. Uh, there's the gas station right there. Military checkpoints back over there. So this is going to be what's technically the first extract. Is when you come through that door or you jump the fence, you can just scoot right down this road. And back here, there's an auxiliary gas station that in the basement of it, there's an extraction point. And if you notice, just a little tidbit... This extraction point, as well as the other ones, they lead to the underground, the underground tunnel system. Because this over here, just past the wall, is the factory map. You know, the, you know those tunnels in factory and how the extract doors go there? That's how all these maps are going to link, which is really interesting. Unless they also tear the walls down eventually, which they might do. But again, we're creeping up over here. The first thing you're going to see is, of course, the factory. But there are scavs in here. Usually there's one or two. One might be over here by the bags. One might be in the backyard. Then you got the blue van right here, which can spawn weapon parts. Looks like we got uh, some tea and an SKS body. That's the OP SKS. That's the one that everybody's always asking, what body do I need to put you know, a mount or a sight on the SKS? That one. I think one of the brown variants also works, but I know that this one works. So once you're here in the parking lot, you got a green crate right on the other side of these bags. Uh, yeah, right there. And then before we actually go in the gas station now, because that's the extract, I want to show you the backyard over here real quick. Because in the beta, they added... There's like a little concrete cylinder over here, and there's a medical bag inside. And the reason I want to show you this is because a lot of times as you spawn into this map... Uh, as a scav, you're going to find you don't have meds on you. And I think that's one of the biggest struggles as a scav is just not having meds. So if you spawn around this general area, you can run over here and you got a big med bag you can loot. And I've also heard from a couple other guys that they've been finding weapon spawns here. I haven't found a weapon here yet, but it's been rumored that you can find some, uh, some full-size weapons thrown in here with this bag. So check it out sometime. 
So let's go ahead and head back over here to the gas station. One more point I want to show you about the looting before we get the hell out of here. It's going to be this table in here on the gas... Oh my god! Oh, look at that. Too bad this is offline mode and I can't keep it. This is what I was going to tell you guys. This table back here in the gas station, it's known to spawn very good loot. Either full-size weapons, which I did not expect to find $120,000, you know, AS Val here. What? Let me see that. What? We just found a Val. Ah, too bad it's offline mode and I can't keep it, but... Yeah, this table is known to spawn the pistol case, the documents case, and a bunch of, uh, you know, other rare items that are very, very hard to find, along with full-size weapons. Uh, here's actually some ammo for the SV-98, which is the other gun I brought in just to, you know, sight with you guys. So, again, this table, it's pretty good. Look, Makarov, oh, that's actually AK ammo, AK muzzle break. So, yeah, pretty good point in here. I think that stuff can also be on the couch sometimes. It's pretty much worth checking this whole room out. Just because of the chance of the rare items. But, as you check out over here, here's the basement. And this is our, our other extraction point. Or technically the first one here. So, there it is. You know, you get near the door. You extract. Good to go. So let's just take one more look at the map here before we get out of here, guys. Just to go over, like, a little bit of a refresh. And, again, I'm going to leave links to these maps in the description so you guys can use them as well. Okay, so, again, we started over here on the left side of the map. You know, sorry, this is high tech, right? I'm showing you a Google document right now. <laughs> Hopefully you can see my mouse okay. But we spawned over here on the left side. You know, here's the main storage yard. Here's the big warehouse that you can loot. Then you eventually cross the river. And you either go through the construction yard to the overpass, or you go through the woods and you hit dorms and go to the overpass. And then eventually, you'll cross the overpass. Here's the gas station. There's the military checkpoint. So basically, all you need to know is once you cross the river, or even you could just follow this main road. But once you cross the river and you're on the main road that goes past the bus stop, all your extraction points are going to be to your right somewhere. So just head to your right, and that's how you get out. You got the gas station exit here, you've got the bunker exit here, and you've got the bunker exit over here. Easy peasy, right guys? So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of customs here. I know this may not have been like, like, I basically didn't go through and show you like every little spot to loot because there's a lot of areas I didn't show you because I really want to encourage exploration. And the reason I say that is because all these loot tables are subject to change. All the time, the devs are changing, you know, what spawns in that van or what spawns in that box. So, I really tell everybody, just check around, you know, really explore the world. Find a good, you know, good little route that you like to take. You know, me normally, I normally, uh, you know, cross the main bridge, hit the convenience store, kill a few scabs. Maybe go to the dorms, but lately I've been skipping it because the scabs have been kind of weird. We're still waiting on that fix for them to, you know, stop shooting through trees so easy. But, you know, it's really up to you which way you go. But, again, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope I helped at least a few of you out. And, yo, drop me a sub if you haven't, guys. We got lots of more Tarkov coming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, guys. Yo, Pink Omega. One bad shot in a kitchen full of dough. Oh. Three bad bitches with a hand on a stove. Oh. Making home movies with a hand full of stove. Oh. I'm cooking all the dumplings. I'm cooking all the dumplings. Motherfuckers wanna act funny. Try to be a man when he knows all runny. Go to pre-K, put your bag in your cubby. Motherfucking gimmick like your man Jeff Dunny.